Welcome back to C-Sharp Tutorial for Beginners. This time we're going to learn about the base keyword. So first let's take a look at the example we did last time where we had an employee and we had a doctor who was an employee and they both have overridden get description methods. This one prints the full name and the employee number. This one prints the full name, the employee number, and the speciality. If you look here you can see employee number. Employee number is defined in the employee class but we're using it in the doctor class. And that is because in an inherited class, we have access to the base class. In a previous tutorial, we talked about the this keyword, which refers to this particular object, which we use to resolve a naming conflict. So while we don't need to use the base keyword to access a uniquely named variable from the base class, we can use the base keyword to access methods or variables when we have a naming conflict. So many times when you have inherited classes, they're going to do similar things, but maybe add on to them. And that's what we're seeing here. The description of a doctor is the same as the description of an employee. We're just adding a speciality. So what we can do is instead of copying this logic and duplicating it, we could just call the get description method here and then add what we need to it. And to do that, we can call base dot get description. And this is going to run our base classes get description method and then add it to this and return it as our inherited classes get description method. So if we hover over get description in doctor, you will see that it is the doctor.getDescription method. Now if we hover this get description, you will see it is calling the employee get description method, which is exactly what we want. If you make the mistake of leaving your base keyword out, it's going to call doctor.getDescription, which means when this runs, it's going to call itself, which is going to call itself over and over and over again until you have a stack overflow. So you have to make sure when you want to call your base method, if it's named the same, you must use your base keyword. Now the other usage of the base keyword is a little more complicated, but you still may run into it because it has to do with constructors. So say an employee, we wanted to be able to automatically create an employee with a first name, a last name and a number and we want to populate all of our details with these details here so we're populating base dot first name base dot last name and this dot employee number which is great and everyone's happy and we could create an employee like this but the problem is we have a doctor and doctor inherits from employee but now we have an error because doctor, when it is created, has no way of passing employee what it needs to be created. So now when we make this doctor, it's unable to create this employee because when employee is created, it has to have this information. So to solve this problem, first and foremost, we have to have a constructor. Because we know the employee constructor has to be created with details, we have to have a way to do that when we create this object. So to access the base constructor, we use a colon, just like with our inheritance. We say the base keyword and then our parameter list. So we're saying when doctor is created, we're going to pass these parameters to our base classes constructor. So we know that it needs a string, it needs a string, and it needs an int. So it could be happy just like that. But this doesn't do us any good because when we create a doctor now, we're creating an employee with no first and last name and the same employee number. So that's not what we need. What we need is to be able to take the first name, the last name, and the employee number when we create a doctor. And then we can pass this information from this constructor straight into our base constructor. And now we don't need to do anything else in this constructor for this to work because our base constructor assigns all of these details for us. So in passing these inputs in to our base constructor, we've already set these values. So now if we go back to program, our employee is going to expect a first name, a last name, and an employee number. And our doctor is going to expect a first name, a last name, and an employee number as well. So now when we run this, it runs exactly as it did before, calling the chain of constructors. So now creating our objects is a little bit easier and cleaner, but we're also ensuring 
that our employees are created with their details, and if we make a doctor, that its base class is always populated with its details as well. So you might have noticed, and I'm going to delete our constructor, that our CTOR shortcut generates a default constructor. Well, if we have this scenario where we actually need things passed to a base class, you can use the control dot shortcut instead to generate a constructor that will automatically populate everything that you need. So then that's all you have to do to get the same thing. Now, last but not least, a lot of times your constructor is going to need to do more than just your base constructor. For example, our doctor has a speciality. So we can take additional parameters. We could take speciality and we could set speciality equals speciality. And then we could make our setter private for our encapsulation. And now see, we have our own defined constructor for doctor that takes everything we need for a doctor. And then we can pass the base class only what the base class needs. So these don't have to line up. You can do additional things like this. And if we go back to program, this is going to expect our brain stuff. And now this is going to be private. And if we run it, you can see it works just the same. So that's as far as I'm going to go with base in this series. Hopefully it will keep you from running into problems. Next up, we're going to talk about interfaces. So thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Happy coding, and until next time, as always, take care.